Hey folks, are you looking to build your own cooler based mash tun? Well, if you are, you come to the right place. I'm going to show you how to do it. Hello everyone and welcome back. To my right, or to your left, is the latest upgrade to my home brewery. It is my uh, larger capacity mash tun. Now, uh, for those of you who've been watching my previous videos, you'll, you'll recall my, my orange round seven gallon Rubbermaid uh, water cooler that I've been using as a mash tun. That thing worked great for five gallon batches of even higher gravity beers. Uh, you know, all right, but it's been showing its age. It's it's getting old. It's it's, it's been cracking on the inside, uh, and some of you have pointed that out in my videos. And and I I'm not blind. I knew it was there. It's just that I didn't want to go out and buy a replacement five gallon cooler or seven gallon cooler because I've been wanting to for a while now. Begin putting together a ten gallon brew house uh, to upgrade to double the batches I put out. And so rather than just getting another same size coolers before which was not capable of of handling the, the uh, 10 gallon batches i took uh, i i doubled the size of my mash tun and got a cooler i have here on hand and i converted this into my new mash tun so uh and this is all part of a bigger project guys i i'm trying to go from five gallon batches to 10 gallon the 10 gallon batches this is the first component in that i hope to do some more videos showing us the other components along the way but uh if you're here to see how to make your own mash tun, well, don't worry. I'll show you how I made mine, and you can take my lessons learned and my and my parts list and go out and make an exact copy or tailor it to however you want. But if you're here for that, keep watching. I'll show you how I made this one. What you see here is everything I'm using in my mash tun design here, starting with the cooler. Now, this cooler is a old Rubbermaid 56 quart cooler that I've had for years, and um, it's time of year when I went to, went to go out and buy a new cooler. They're no longer on the store shelves because it's almost fall, right? So um, I had to use an existing cooler I had on hand, no problem. But uh, it's rated at 56 quarts, and I was going for a exactly 56 quart cooler, which worked out great because my old mash tun was uh, seven gallons, and this, this would be 14 gallons or 56 quarts. However, when I did a fill test, I opened things up and I filled this up to to see where it overflowed, it started overflowing, of course, here in the hinge line, and I only got 53 quarts in here. So keep that in mind. Just because the cooler says it's at a certain size, don't trust it, uh, verify before you start cutting and drilling this thing, okay? You're also gonna need everything you see here, um, except for my tools. You can get your own tools, haha, <laughs> right? But uh, starting from the left here, I have a half inch ID clear vinyl tubing piece that I cut off of a, an existing piece of hose I got and about five feet total length of half inch CPVC tubing not regular PVC you want CPVC or copper if that's your thing this is a lot cheaper than copper a lot easier to drill and cut and uh, and deburr for example than copper so I, I prefer this material and there's three inch lengths a number of them here as well as uh, about four uh, lengths of about six and seven eighths of an inch long. I'm thinking, not quite sure. I'll verify that and put it on the screen there for you. As well as more CPBC fittings, uh, elbows, four of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven T's. Um, optionally, which I may, I may not use, but I have for my old mash tun, is I may reuse this as a uh, CPBC adapter from a half inch to a thread connection here as well as a hose barb that would go on it uh, like this basically um, to, to connect the hose but I may not use that but I have it on hand so I will just keep it off to the side as well as uh, other parts I have Teflon tape and I, here I have a two inch brass nipple piece you may need something longer or shorter depending on the wall thickness and geometry that you're going to use in your cooler um, so uh, I bought a different a couple of different sizes and returned the ones that didn't fit and this is the one I fitted uh, You're gonna wrap this in Teflon tape of course because it's threaded. Uh, I also have a half-inch ball valve uh, I had to go out and get a new ball valve the 3 8 size that was 
in my old mash tun um, and the 3 8 hardware that would go on with it were too small for the pre-drilled hole in my cooler so uh, by the size that fits you best but I'm using a half inch size hardware here I also have a half inch to half inch hose barb fitting uh, a half inch foster lock nut a 13 16 uh, o-ring which is just slightly smaller than the diameter of the uh, brass nipple here so it'd be slightly snug but not stretched too much as well as a steel washer uh, I use it as a spacer mainly, um, but it's, I think it's about 7 eighths of an inch ID also. And some tools that you're going to need are, uh, well, what I've used at least in this video, are the, is the pipe cutter, which really works great. Um, a tape measure, a pen to make markings, some uh, adjustable wrenches and other things to, in order to get a good grip on some of these things to like tighten them up. Uh, and also either a Dremel tool to cut slits in your manifold or a drill with a small drill bit. This is a 564 drill bit and this is going to uh, make little holes in here as well if that's what your choice is. So if you're drilling holes, use a drill, doing slits, use a Dremel tool or a hacksaw or whatever else that you have on hand. All right, let's get going. So let's remove the existing plastic valve that's in there. And this, this one is just, this hex key like this comes out like that. I'm going to take off the, uh, the grommet as well. Now I'll measure the ID of the existing hole to see if it's suitable for your uses. And I, mine is 7 eighths of an inch uh, in diameter, which is the right size for a half inch ball valve and, and, and piping. I also need to cut off this little tab here because that was just used to clock and orient my plastic valve here with this little notch here, as, as you can see. And that's, that's all that was for. I don't need it now, so I'm going to shave it off with a Dremel tool. All right, there we go. I just wrapped this nipple with about five or so uh, turns of the Teflon tape. And I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and screw this on here until it's uh, hand tightened. You don't need to go too far with it like that, okay? Then I'm gonna take the steel washer and put it over the uh, from the back so it butts up really nice against the front here and I'm going to slide this whole assembly into the hole just like that and then on the inside I'm going to take my o-ring and slide it over and it should be somewhat snug as it slides over the threads because you want it to seal up real good then I'm going to take my faucet washer and screw that on the back end until it's snug I tighten it until it's snug, so that the for the so that the ball valve on the front side isn't wobbly anymore, and it's got a firm grip on the wall. You can't tighten it too much because it will crush the plastic, but you need to cr uh, tighten it somewhat in order to compress the O-ring uh, underneath the nut, and also to pull everything together uh, so the ball valve isn't wobbly out outside. And the goal is to have enough threads here to screw on your hose barb adapter. Next, perform a leak test by putting some water in here. I got some hot water in here to help simulate uh, a warmer mash temperature, just in case uh, temperature makes a difference, which it may. And I'm just going to let this sit here for a while and see if it leaks on the outside. So the first thing I did was cut my first three inch section here, and I'm going to use this as a template to cut the rest of these by lining it up and marking it and cutting it uh, so they're exactly the same lengths all the way across so that way I don't have too many different oddball sizes and everything's of, of equal size so it doesn't matter where in the manifold it goes. Alright so I'm going to line this up with my eyeballs there. So now to use the pipe cutters I'm going to go ahead and line my cutter with my mark and snug it up until it just touches and it can start to bite a little bit and then without too much tension at first go ahead and make a rotation it draws a line you turn down the clapping force a little bit more go around and tighten some more go around tighten some more go around and by the maybe the third or fourth time boom there it goes and there we are right there so that's why I prefer 
these uh, pipe cutters, much cleaner cuts and much more, I mean, they just look prettier. Not that it really matters for function, but I just like the way it looks. Now that the short pieces are cut, I want to cut the longer pieces and there are four of them in my design. So I am going to measure those out and I already calculated that length already off camera here. And go ahead and cut those. Now it's time to decide folks, holes or slits. This piece here is from my old mesh ton where I drilled holes at a, probably about about a third to almost halfway around this piece and uh, it was, it's worked great. It's never had any stuck sparges or anything um, and because of that I'm more apt to want to spend the extra time to drill the holes. On the other hand, I don't want to spend hours drilling holes. Um, so maybe I'm going to change things up. I might do some slits for a change on the smash ton. You know, hey, why not, right? Be bold, right? Do something different. So I'm not going to do the holes. I'm going to do the slits instead this time. And there we go. Not bad, huh? Finally got them all cut up, folks. Uh, it took a, probably a lot less time than it would to drill all those holes, so I'm kind of glad I went this route. All right, folks, back to the leak test. The whole time I was cutting slits in the in the pipes, uh, probably over the course of about an hour off and on. Um, it's been here for a while, and there's no dripping, so this tells me it's good to go. Before I dump the water, I'm gonna just go, go ahead and rinse the dust off of the suckers here. All right, folks, let's build. There we go, folks. Pretty good. Doesn't really matter if they're completely lined up, you know, on the bottom or not. This is turned, who cares? It'll work just fine. I can even turn it in place if I wanted to, right? But uh, it's fine. All right, so let's get this inside the cooler. All right, this just drops in like that. And this half inch ID hose fits just snugly inside this T right here. So you can Rotate this T up a little bit like that, so it's sloped upwards. Work this in snugly. See, it's not coming out. And this then over here can snug into the hose barb. Just like that. Now my other alternative design option, which I think I'm going to go with uh, after thinking about this a bit more, is to go ahead and use this CPVC adapter I had from my old mash ton along with a new uh, half inch hose barb for it that fits this hose. And I'm going to and I cut a small piece, which is going to go in here like this, all right? And this is going to go on top of that like this. And I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter. And now when you put this in, you can slide it in just like this. And there we go. Just like that. See, now it's, it's centered. It's not going to go anywhere. And here it is all done, folks. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty simple manifold. Doesn't take much effort to make. Just uh, the biggest part was figuring out how to uh, seal up the through hole in the wall with the hardware from the local hardware store and what was on hand there versus what you had in your mind when you first went to the store. Uh, but uh, once you figured out uh, how to seal up and put your ball valve in, as you can see, the rest of the stuff was just really simple. And in fact, and, I, and I'm glad I did this after all. I, I think this is a lot firmer um, way to attach this hose without it slipping off while stirring or, or sparging. So there you go, folks. Now here's an enhancement I made since the original build uh, that you saw earlier with the faucet lock nut that I used, the little skinny lock nut. That lock nut discolored after soaking this thing overnight in some PBW solution and I did not like what I saw. So I went back and found a brass lock nut like this one and put this on instead and I'm much happier with that. 
Another thing I added after doing some testing was a air hole here in, in the manifold to let any air that gets trapped in here out uh, so this thing won't fold up when you add the water like it was doing to me before. And it also seemed to help uh, the ability to start the drain as well. So uh, that's what I did. Now something I failed to mention earlier in my parts list because this can vary from, from person to person as to how they want to transfer their beer, but uh, so, so, someone might ask, well, what goes in the front of the ball valve? Well, that would depend on your brewing setup, but what's common is a hose barb like this. That's, uh, you, you can put some Teflon tape on it and screw it on and snug it up and snug it up like that. And then now you can attach your clear vinyl tubing to this and drain this into your boil kettle. So there you have it folks, my mash tun. Hope you have enough detail. I hope I didn't miss anything important for you. Uh, this is, I, I try to be as detailed as possible while I was doing this. It's kind of hard to film and do something new for the first time at the same time and do both well. And I, my focus was more on making the mash tun work and a little less on the video. So I apologize if something was missing there. But anyway, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. Uh, you can even post them on my Facebook page in the in the feed of this video. If you like the video, please like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And uh, other than that, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe.